I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. America is trashy. No, not in a celebrity, tabloidy kind of way. I'm talking about literal trash. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, the average American produces close to five pounds of waste each day. About one pound of that is food waste. New Yorkers produce 24 million pounds of garbage every day. That waste is shipped off to be buried or burned as far away as South Carolina or Ohio. Some young people want to change that. As part of our partnership with Salesforce.org, we talk to young innovators about how they're combating the impact of climate change on vulnerable communities. I am a micro hauler. I ride my bike and pick up food scraps and put them in the trailers. My route on a, on a heavy day, it'll be like 200 pounds of food scraps. In about two hours, 19-year-old Bree Peralta will make 25 stops at homes, apartments, and businesses across the Bushwick neighborhood of Brooklyn. His job? Taking scraps like discarded fruits, vegetables, coffee grounds to be transformed into a nutrient-rich compost that's sold to local gardeners. How does composting relate to climate change? Like, connect those dots for me. Well, all the food that you don't divert from landfills, release greenhouse gases, and methane, and that all contributes to climate change. Clients pay a small fee for scraps to be brought to this small public garden in Brooklyn's Bushwick neighborhood, the home of BK Rot, an organization with 20 young people on payroll. They slop, chop, and mix the nitrogen-rich food scraps with carbon-heavy wood chips. The piles are turned over regularly, taking in oxygen to break down bacteria and fungi while speeding up decomposition. Finally, after eight weeks of this carefully planned dance of matter, compost is run through a solar-powered sifter before being packaged for sale. Every month, BK Rot will divert 15 to 20,000 pounds of food waste, but New York City produces almost 5 million tons of compostable waste every year. What do we want? Compost! What do we want it? Now! All right! Sandy Nurse co-founded BK Rot before getting elected to the New York City Council, where she chairs the Sanitation Committee. She's working to achieve a city goal of zero waste by 2030. To export our waste, we spend almost a half a billion dollars to send our waste to regional landfills or to burn it in Pennsylvania or in upstate New York. So the ability to, one, stop burning um, our trash and stop producing this methane has immense benefits for the climate crisis. Every day, the city has about 2,100 garbage trucks on New York City streets hauling the trash to massive transfer stations where it's compressed into huge containers, then shipped off by barge, truck, and train. Where does it all go? When we look at the location of incinerators, for example, most of incinerators in the country are located in low-income and communities of color. These are communities that are also hit first and worst with climate impacts like flooding, severe heat, and they become the bury and burn sites or the places that have to suffer those impacts. And so there's a real imbalance there, an inequality that has to be reckoned with. Here at BK Rot, we like to talk about climate resilience. How do we come up with a solution for that problem that we didn't create? Dior St. Hilaire is a co-director of BK Rot. There's something special about compost about the way it brings people together. I have never heard anyone say that before in my life. There's something special about compost that brings people together. What's Absolutely. that? Absolutely. How so? You could come from a different socioeconomic status, a different cultural background, because you have a love of compost. BK Rot continues to grow and is expanding their solar capacity to meet energy needs without generating greenhouse gases. With more than $200,000 invested in wages, BK Rot sees its biggest potential for growth in neighborhood youth. Your system is going to have that. We know the problems that are facing us right now, and it, it is scary, but we don't have to stay scared. I love seeing like the, the change that's possible. And it just gets bigger and better and more people care and there's more support and there's just more possibilities.
In the coming months, we'll visit more vulnerable communities impacted by climate change. You can watch our first piece on how the environment is making it harder for children to breathe in the South Bronx on Matter of Fact TV.